are. Quite so. And likewise, if I may be so bold, as to offer such a particularly impertinent observation, there you are. <laughs> All present and correct, so to speak. The place? Let's call it London. Oh, the villainy, London town. The dodgy end. That's what, the dodgy end of London. The dodgy end of London town. Time? Four. I say four. A foggy four o'clock. She says it's four bells and foggy. Four foggy bells. And here we four have gathered at this somewhat doubtful place. At this point in time, at this point in space. And you, you might, might ask why. You, you might. might. Are we tonight, Sam? Make no mistake. As cold as a. as cold as a tide. And not our town. Hard as a rock. And our place. This town. This, this town, town is a rock and a hard place. Colder than a tiger. Unforgiven. You know it. A Sherlock in the storm. Now there's a man who knew his business. Too well unforgiven he was. Unforgiven as a Antarctica. Quite so. But think on this one is something lives everywhere. There are creatures, many creatures that call the very desert own. Or those by contrast are eaten up by the longing. Full blown slaves they are to the deep pull of the poles. Quite so. Who can live without a natural habitat? No one, that's it. Not us, neither. Now, now that's for sure, London town. Cold, odd, unforgiven as um. as um. And uh, <laughs> The flora and fauna of this incomparable locale. London town. The dodgy end, that is. Earth had not anything to show more fair. Excellent, excellent. Sturdy. Sturdy. Strangely, stop. Stable as an anchor. But remarkably, Lord White. Yeah. Give it here. This is a breakthrough in disability provision. And no mistake, it. that's mine. I nicked it, my property, fair and square. No funny business. Mm. You have strangely liberated. That brings us to quite a few possibilities, so it does. The future is replete with exciting options, Ned. What? What's exactly? For those who have a future, you know what I mean. Or oh, I always do feel we have a perfect understanding, Geddes. Then you'll understand why I'm now depriving you of this handsome crutch. Gladys must you. This crutch will come in handy. Handy indeed. What, but it, what a bit of cutting edge disability provision between friends, eh? That boy always is. The mountains of legal decrees and the paper food will keep the lawyer's bellies full. Those poor are the people who risk us from the starvation. Doggy doggy, no mistake. That's what life is nasty, brush and short. Every man for himself. Or herself in the case of the female of the species. Such as myself. Don't look for pity. Short <laughs> script is best your bargain for. And a singular absent of gravy. Gravy. No. Gravy, there's never any gravy! Gravy yesterday, gravy tomorrow, never any gravy today, oh no! We have to fight like hounds for our daily bread, like wild beasts in the wilderness of brick. I say, Reggie, have you ever seen such filth? Certainly not, Archie. It's like a pigsty if you don't fall. Well, pigs! Quite so, which is rather. more, as you can see, these are the most appalling slums, the product of low class 
neglect and providence. The poor are really hopeless in every way. No wonder they're poor, eh? Oh, there you know. <laughs> oh, sorry, Miss, it's falling down. But what can be done? We cannot in good conscience allow people to live in such conditions. Certainly not. We must. We must evict them all to spare them further suffering. Brilliant. And build some nice flats for people to, um, wash themselves. Certainly. <laughs> Now, where is this Peach and Jeffrey's establishment? Would you judge me about it? Best time of the month, they say. All of Get to me! Get it to me! Oh, my dear! Who are you now, my father? I say, what on earth is going on here? She's made me as if robbing a poor cripple's ass father weren't enough for the way that we were doing. Oh, I say, I say, this poor man has got a wooden leg. I say, I say, now that is not cricket. I'm not murdering him. I'm just extracting the copper he promised me for sparing his life. Oh, that's a relief. Don't believe her, sir. She's a bad one, she is. A thief, a liar, a lethal killer. The infamous. Lady Night <gasps> Really? Well, then I must strongly encourage you, Madam um, Night Time, was it? To let this poor creature be. Hasn't he something? Well, certainly not. And nobody looks at things, have you two? Uncle Chris, my precious mate! I'll show you how we play cricket in this part of town. Oh, no, please. I have an appointment at my club in half an hour. That's right. Different appointments and a different club. Is an arm more likely than 
nearly any other to be forgotten. And I can nick them too from any tart place you fancy. And leave out the London standing room. Very well. I won't sneeze at a decent wheeze. Report in midday tomorrow. Next. We work together, sir. Leave me husband what I blind with boiling water in the same accident that killed my baby. He sold me into sin as a ranger to keep him in victuals. I'm ridden by pox and by guilt. Uh, we are the most profitably coquette pair. I can't use you. Hey, why not? I've got three blind husbands and six dead babies already. <laughs> that old act is wearing thin. But Mr. Bitch, I don't need two more clowns with the same old tricks. Go. Go off safe and devise a better infirmity. Next. <laughs> More wounded, sir. Blindness is optional. Precipitately <laughs> made this sip will be mine to the shock of the gun that we say rather dead. Just one man. Mr. Peachum has been looking for a good patriotic off and on for months now. Here, hand over that crutch net. What? Hand it over oh. and be quick about it. Thank you. Oh, the blindness! Oh, 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 the pain! Oh. Definite potential. Report here, <laughs> nine in the morning, sharp. Where there's an outside, there must be an inside. All exterior is crying interior. That's a fact. Love and marriage, horse and carriage, and all that. It's a natural principle, pure and simple. And we'd be failing in our duty. No question about it. Failing in our duty. Without a doubt. But first, we must give you a peek inside the emporium of the legendary Mr. Peacher, who, if this were an all morality play, would be playing the part of Mr. Vile Corruption. Granted, there are street angels who often turn into house stibbles. There's no neighbourhood lacking in those well worn types. But only here. Only here will you encounter a fraud and a pimp of such an avaricious cast of mind that indoors and outdoors he shops the very criminals that do his dirty work for him. Once the law comes snapping at their heels. He's a winner every time that deadly game for he can claim the blooming reward just as no longer as they can provide him with profit. They say his blood runs cold. Ice in his veins is what I've heard. That man's blood runs cold. Cold and firm. And time <laughs> In a very pompous voice, that more ways and practices of the dissolute group at the very bottom of the societal flag here are, of course, a metaphor for a truly decadent political culture. I say this because I'm clever and you're stupid. That's Gronia Accounts. 
Sir, Black Mole was sent word that a trial comes in the afternoon. A joke, so you will order the matter, sir, that she will be acquitted. The wench is very active and industrious. You may assure her that's all soft in the evidence. Tom Gag, sir, has been found guilty. A lazy dog! This is definitely out of a brief and straight in the book. The captain of Tom Gag, 40 pounds. Betty Sly? But Betty Sly, though, that's why I will save her from transportation, for I can get more by her staying in England. Betty's brought in more brass this year than any five of the gang. It'd be a crime to lose such a good client. Well, I do like to let the ladies escape. A good sportsman always lets the head partridges fly. Without dispute, she is a fine woman. Why, I'm deeply obliged to myself for my education, and to say a bold word. She's trained up more young fellows to the business than the gaming table itself. <laughs> well said, Filch. There, you've nailed it. We and the surgeons are more indebted to women than all the other professions put together. Mr. Pinto! Mr. Pinto! Make haste to Newgate, boy, and let my friends know what I intend. Is Captain McKeith in your book? McKeith, uh, why do you speak of that villain, my dear? Answer me directly, does he feature? I set his name down in the blacklist. That is all. He spends his life amongst women, and is thus at all times, head and shoulders in debt. What a shame. I am sorry for Polly's sake that the captain is so foolish. For Polly's sake? What business has he keeping company with lords and gentlemen? He should just leave them to prey upon one another. What on earth can the woman mean for Polly's sake? Captain McKeith is very fond of the girl. I'm sure it was he who just saw departing her chamber now by the way of the drain pipe. Yeah, what of that? <laughs> if I have any skills in the ways of women, I'm sure Polly thinks of him a very pretty man. She is young, he is handsome, and nature takes its course. I fear she may have designs, sir. Designs? What kind of designs? Matrimonial designs. Matrimonial designs? <laughs> I sincerely hope not, dear wife, that you would be of such unsound mind <laughs> as to go as far as to suggest the way to my marry him. Oh, there is someone oh, dearest. No. I'm sure of it. If my worst nightmare come to pass, what do we do? This cannot be, so Mrs. Peter, this cannot be. Gangsters and highwaymen are generally very good to their whores, but they are very devils to their wives. Well, that's a fact that's universally acknowledged. Love and duck. Look here, wife. You know I would indulge the girl in anything, anything at all, but marriage. Marriage? Not that. For after that, how should we ever be safe? Are we not then in her husband's power? For a husband has absolute power over all his wife's secrets and fortune. And Polly has none of her unloose tongue. Well? Well? Answer me what I asked you by the base of the drain pipe. Are you married to the captain? Why should I reply to someone who speaks to me no better than a dog? Oh, you, Jay, you have to I know it! Haste, 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 my dear. <laughs> Polly is our daughter, after all. But I is ever to the main charts, is that not so, Paul? I know as well as any of the fine ladies had to make the most of myself, sir. And of my man, too. Well said, Polly. A noble sentiment, nobly expressed. Still, she does not deny my charge. Oh, what is there to deny? See how she beats around the bush, husband. Press up, press up, harder! Polly, Polly, dearest Polly. Yes, dear father. You know, dear daughter, that I'm not against your toying or trifling with a customer in the way of business or to ferret out a secret or the like. I do indeed, dear father. Excellent, excellent. As I thought, perfect harmony on the subject so far. So far and no further, I'll worry. Oh, you must also understand, <laughs> beloved child. My dear papa. That's all. Cut your throat like roof off while now you're married. Do you understand me? You, Jane, you Don't have you it. understand? Well, how could I not? Don't you tell me what I expect to hear from my own dear father? <laughs> A viper's reply and an admission of guilt by default. Right, the windpipe with me tobacco knife. He'll cut you ear to ear. But tell me truly, Polly. It's just really so. Oh, no. See? Even now she will not answer. 
You baggage, you slut, you selfish jade, the wench is married, husband, through and through. Married? Through and through? Oh, that I should have lived to see this day. Polly? Oh, she was always a proud slut. <laughs> and now the wench has played the fool because she wishes to ape the jade tree. I tell you, Polly, you'll find yourself in a debtor's prison in a month. And McKeith may hang his father and mother-in-law to get at their daughter's fortune. Oh, no. Oh, look what you've done. Oh, where did I go wrong? I do believe I've been too loud. Absolutely not. I do believe I've been Do not marry him for honour or money, mother. The truth is, I love him. No! Why, yes. Oh, no. I'm the first My head swims with rain. Oh, she swoons with fury, the rum bottle. Quickly off that. What to do? We want to do. <laughs> quickly, quickly, the rum bottle. Marry! Things cannot be left as they are. You've done this while deep on a book. I have. Bound by bell book and clergy. Why, oh, yes. Dogmatically no. bound, legally enslaved. Disaster, disaster indeed. And how do you propose to live now, child? Well, I govern women, sir, upon the income of my husband. <laughs> <laughs> what? Has the wench turned fool? A highwayman's wife, like a soldier's, has as little of his pay as of his company. Tis a fact. Tis a hard fact. Quite so. But there may be a way to soften it, for in that very fact may lie our salvation. Mr. Peter? You do know, dear wife, that a highwayman's life, like a soldier's, is truly as long as a piece of string. Why, yes. The simile is apt indeed. For no one knows when or how it may end. Admirably expressed, my dear wife. Oh, Mr. Peter. Which suggests to me the pleasant possibility that we may gain from this tramp's folly by snipping it in two. Father. Hold your tongue, slut, your father's thinking. <laughs> Widowhood! Widowhood? Yes. Widowhood, in answer to all your problems and ours. What good is widowhood to me? For why? Will this one just ask for you, Lady? Never. Oh, then, have pity. Surely you must grasp the simple fact that there is but one way of saving yourself from all of us now. You must secure the right of his fortune in the new will. Then have him charged and hanged at the next sessions. Then, and only then, will you be the happiest of beings. A rich widow! The murder of the man I love. My blood runs cold at the very thought of him. A good legacy will soon warm it. <laughs> and in any case, Pussy, your duty to your parents obliges you to hang him. Widowhood, yes. Exactly what the doctor ordered. And then we'll all live happily ever after. Oh, Father, pity. Here she goes again with the mewling. <laughs> <laughs> what good is this to me? It is the death of all hope. I know my own heart. I cannot survive him. Why, wench, you are a disgrace to your very sex. <laughs> oh, but hear me, Mother. If you have ever loved... Enough of love! Our course is settled. Keep out of the road, Polly, and let wiser heads plot profit from the damage you've done. Father! No more! I hear no more of it. Away, hussy, away! Hang your husband to be dutiful to those who gave you life! This is an action I never thought to take. The captain being such an excellent client, which I rarely encounter for bringing in the readies. But she leaves me no option, my dear. His blood is on her hands alone. Yes, she will do what's in her power to save him. It is not in her power to save him. Fear not, my loving spouse. I'll undertake to manage Polly. And I'll prepare matters for your baby. Now I am a wretch indeed. I see him already. In the car. On his way to the gallows tree. To 
cold, cold death. What will become of me? What will become of poor Polly? For now I can at least inform him of their plan and aid him in his escape. It shall be so. Oh, 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 my friends of all the time. 
Indeed, Polly, and my ask the same of you. My life and liberty brings me, and you. My work involves some rough trade, and it is here that I must come to find my rough trading. But you consort with whores. Not the whores. Filthy creatures that they are. Only with those who consort with them. You would surely finish me if I thought you were untrue. Suspect my honour, suspect my courage. Suspect anything but my love. May my pistol misfire and my mare slip a shoulder while I'm pursued. If ever I forsake you. Then you'll never leave me, will you? Never. Never. There is no power, no force that can tear me from your arms. You might soon tear a pension from a courtier, a fee from a lawyer, a pretty woman from a looking glass or any woman from a ballroom. But to tear me from you, it's impossible. And offer you. But it's not to be Mac. For I must be torn from you at this very moment. What? We must part? We must. We must. My parents distrust you. My father will impede you, Mac. Even now they are searching the whole city for you. Polly, my love, my darling wife. One kiss, then. Have it gone? My hand, my heart is so riveted to yours that I cannot lose my hold. My papa may intercept you, Mac, and then I would lose all. As would I. Must I then go? You must. But promise me, darling. Promise me that absence will not doom our love. If you doubt it, let me stay and be hanged. You must be gone. Farewell. Oi, oi! <laughs> My friends and fellow tradesmen in particular, you know that I hold you at the very pinnacle of a thing. Where else can I find such a set of philosophers, eh? Who to a man are far above the few of them? Heart of oak. Industrious as ants, courageous as lions! Who is here? Would God was friend! Who is here? That one can betray him for my kingdom! Well, I'll not away! Show me a gang of courtiers that can say as much! Parasites, that's what they are. Oh. Whereas we set the world to right with the bats and balance, is what we do. We're cure for greed, for sinful avarice. For a wretch acquires nothing to enjoy it but to hide it away like a jackdaw! Yeah. You're a bright yeah. world of enjoyment and filling it with dead capital! But we, we set it free for the free hearted and kindly help the poor mind the overcome <laughs> sinful ways. Speaking of which, it's time to start to work a charity. Coach Fjord will soon be on the heat. Alas, I cannot join you. What? Hey, Captain, this is a rare thing. The God is not to uh, Pickens rich. That may be, but tonight I've got some business with Mr. Peacher. Peacher? Is he acting up then? What? The dog? I blow his brains out. No such thing you've done. He and I have had a slight difference. And until he's resolved, I should be obliged to keep out of his way. But business, as you know, cannot go on without him. He must continue to act under him. From the moment I break from him, our gang is ruined. As a ball to a hall, he is to us of great convenience. Make him believe I've quitted the gang. I'll continue to meet with you at our private quarters. A week or so will probably reconcile us. Your instructions shall be observed. And now, to our gentlemen. Success to Tim you. What is this? All gone? All missing? The heat for self requires more company. Jenny! Suki! Have all my small birds flown? Over here, Captain. What's this? Blind man's bluff? I don't know, Captain. Grandmother's footsteps more like. Oh, following in your grandmother's are you, Jenny? Three generations of oars. Oh no, dear Captain, that's not the game we're playing at all. Well. The game we're playing has very strict rules and very, very severe punishments. The name of this game is Kim the Tail. Oh, 
Oh, I know this one. <laughs> On the donkey! Oh, hey, 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 you're feeling this thing, okay? Hey, hey, hey! 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 Hey!
along with the loving couple and the bonny baby and the happily ever after bit at the end. Well? Who's the car you see on my man in Dire Straits? If you love me, Lucy, oh. you must help me, Lucy. Peter wants me dangling from the gallows tree in the cold by the door. Which is all you deserve. He does, my darling. Choking on my own life's blood, that's what he wants from me. My goodness, that'd be been harsh, isn't it? Yes. After you've just done him the honour of marrying his daughter. What? Who told you that? The dog's in the street. Uh, it's, it's a lie. The dog's in the street rarely lie. No, but listen, you must Save listen. Save your breath, Matt. I know exactly what you've been up to in this pretty Polly Peacher. Such cheek. Such effrontery. I'm a good to scratch your eyes out of her! It's a lie. It's a lie, I swear it. Nothing at all to it but a young girl's fancy. I visited the Peachums on business. I chat to her. I even flat her a little. I give her the old peck of the cheek. Oh, Captain. Do you love me? <laughs> yeah, certainly. Pass the biscuits. <laughs> now may I go, you crazy bitch? <laughs> Next minute, the silly wagon through the church goes all over London, as if we had a pile and groom of the royal wedding itself. Fairy tales, Mac. Nothing but fairy tales. You're the mother of my unborn child, Lucy. <clears throat> Why would I abandon you for another? That's a great mystery, isn't it? I wouldn't. I haven't abandoned you, Lucy. And I promise you, my darling, that if you help me escape this place, I'll make an honest woman of you within the day. Mac. I swear, my darling. You mustn't trifle with me, Mac. It's too cruel. Never! I would never do such a thing. Honestly. Father, tell my heart. Mac! Ah! Do you mean me? With all my heart. And you haven't betrayed me. I swear it, my darling. I'm back. Oh, you see. No, no blind aid, Mr. Lockett. I'm here on business. My father. Mackey, what on earth? Betrayed, my friend. Shocked once more by those thieving whores of Highgate. Have they no respect for law and order? None. No one that. No sense of right and wrong. Shame is not boss. <laughs> After all the brass you put in their purses. After all the nights of high delight you've given them on and all. Cans for nothing, it seems. Ungrateful <laughs> slags. Ungrateful is their middle name, boss. Peach and bribe the Peach now and Don't mention that parasite to me, Mac. He's trying to. I know. I know he's going. And if he has his way, he'll be dancing on air tomorrow morning. Again, I must ask, what happened to loyalty? What happened to gratitude? What happened to looking out for your fellow businessman? Loyalty, gratitude. Well, I'm sorry to inform you, my simple friend, that uh, Peachum's vocabulary does not include any of those charming terms. You see, his heart, his heart is as cold as, uh, as, uh, oh, oh, oh. Antarctica? Precisely. A pretty similar, but uh, have no fear, Mac. For some of us know very well that a friend in need is a friend indeed. The Bristol coach. Your portion, sir, given always with a heart and a heart. I deferred to the guards that are down the road, claiming I had intelligence to be lurking there. I'm much obliged to you for that, boss. And I to you for this. The coach to York. Now the boys were by now, I should think they'll be back with a full purse within the hour. Excellent. I sent the guards to investigate the robbery of the Bristol coach. Uh, Matt will bring your portion to your club if you like. No. There's no need for haste. I'll collect what's mine when I come to see you again with a plan for your release. As you wish. And when, may I ask, might that be? Well, <clears throat> the royal wedding is tomorrow and I'll have to attend to that. For every criminal in London will be busy. What with all the houses being empty by day. And half the populace pissed by the sea time. <laughs> After that job's done, I'll free you by hook or by crook. Tiger Brown, nice to salute you, sir. 
as a friend, and as a man of business. Keep up your spirits, Mac. Buy wine. Buy women. Buy peace of mind till I return. You see? Your father at least understands that I'm a man of honour. Oh, his pretty remarks bring a tear to my eye. I'm sure he'll rain gifts and good with the palace once we'll win. What a delightful prospect. Chief of Police. Public enemy number one. Working together for the common good. What could be better? And we'll all trip together down the primrose path. Oh, I could have been better myself. <laughs> Only trouble is, he's a bigger liar and a greedier thief than a lot of you petty criminals put together. You see? It's true. I should know it. He's a two-faced, bare-faced villain. I see his tricks and his smiling crimes day in, day out. The likes of you have got pawns on his chessboard to be bartered with while he's filling up his rat's nest with your ill-gotten gains. And but he'll surely share them with his own daughter and her handsome group. Hmm, I doubt it. He's just promised to free me. I heard him only an hour ago arranging to meet Peachum to see how the money to be had from your capture should be divided between them. That can't be. He'll betray you more eagerly than any whole. Unless I've settled his hash for good. Oh, Lucy. Quick, Lucy. Nobody wants you here. 
Oh, 
And Miss Brown, do you really think so? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you moron! You have failed me entirely! You've taken my happiness and you've slipped through your fingers like a small bird right. escaping! And you'll suffer for it! You'll spend years in tents if you don't get out there and track my husband down! Look, it doesn't matter where he is! Then find him! Find my lover, it's all over! Miss Brown, let's go! Go! go. Execute him this very day in case he and his gang tried to disrupt the royal wedding. Which means he's no further use to any of us. Let's get to it then, Chief. Right. Don't let us detain you. Much appreciated, Mrs. P. But first, <laughs> I got to deliver a message. Oh? Who to? To you. Both of you. Right, so far away. <laughs> Message. <laughs> is that this is all your fault? Oh, I get harsh like a brown very hard. Shut thing. up! Don't you tell my dear wife to shut up! All right! <laughs> but then perhaps you can tell me then why you impeached our most profitable client. And why did you not consult me before you had him arrested? He married Polly! What? We are dead for! Married your daughter? To get out our money! The man's a jackal! He'd have stripped very cold to our backs. Surely you can see our difficulty? We didn't want blood, so we resorted to the law. A sorry tale and a guarantee of blood. We played our only ace chief. Well, that's as may be, but the fact remains that I've now lost ten pounds a month in kickbacks. My own losses are even greater. It's a commercial calamity. Mac and I have been partners for years, and now, because your daughter can't keep her knees together, I'm deprived of a quarter of my entire income. We were beside ourselves, Chief, when the Jade revealed her evil act. Why, it's as clear as day he'd only married her to get on our fortune. Well, which we spent our whole lives amassing. Fingers to the bone. Morning, noon and night. My heart bleeds for you, but uh, how can I put this? Uh, I'm a busy man in my official and unofficial capacities, and I haven't time for sob stories, however entertaining. Entertaining? So here's the situation as I see it. <laughs> you? have sabotaged a major source of my income for selfish reasons of your own. Selfish? 
guess I wouldn't call it selfish. It was an act of pure desperation. Of self-preservation, you see. So you say, but that don't change the fact that I am now out of pocket and will continue to be out of pocket for the future as we know it. Fortunes are all sheep through. We can't have gravy every day. Christmas comes for once a year. Very true, which is why you will supply me with the entire £40 that you've received as a reward for capturing McKeith. Right. And... <laughs> and a quarterly annuity of £50 to replace the future income that you've stolen from me by this vile act of treachery. What? Have you got... Have you got mad? Where'd you go? Oh. Oh, no. Help it. Look, do that. <laughs> it is you and this old soak, are you, your darling wife here, who have lost your minds entirely if you expect me to shoulder these losses on your behalf. Tiger, Tiger Brown, I have pity on a poor old tradesman. I'll be expecting a sealed envelope at my club at seven with the requisite funds enclosed. Future payments can be arranged at our leisure. Brandy! <laughs> you regret this, Brown. I'm not the only one with dirty hands here. If you try to put the squeeze on me, I am. I am putting the squeeze on you, mate. And I don't feel great now, does it? I'll do for you, Brown. I promise. The squeeze. <laughs> the squeeze that I'm currently putting on you will feel like a lover's embrace compared to what I've got lined up for you if you don't deliver. All right. You regret this, Brown. Is my wife here as witness? See what I can come up with. Oh, thank you, 
Filch. You really are the best of men. Sweet natured and reliable. As as Big Ben. Or, or, or the shipping forecast. Thanks, miss. That really is uh, the nicest compliment anyone has uh, ever paid me. Really? <laughs> I'm sad. Oh, I mean, there's one man that she leaves. The ship you forecast. Isn't that lovely? Oh, it did last good. No pound of port to pay the bond. Oh, pounds are the best, I always say, also. Some of them, perhaps. What? Oh, pounds are the best, but not when their bonds are based on cold calculation and trade. Lucy plays her henchman Lockwood. Targa sucks his pals to peep to his drawn. And where's Matthew when his true love is famed for love them? Why, no one to be seen that swear. In the face of commercial calamity, please know how friendships dissolve like funeral lashes and laughters. <laughs> ourselves in our usual quarters, when Lockett, Peachum, Tiger Brown and every PC prod in London is beating the bands in my pursuit. Home is where the heart is, Captain! Yeah. Yeah. Then let us make free as we would our own firesides. For here are our friends of the heart, our own kind, and those with whom we are thick, well, thick as thieves! Yeah. Yeah. Better lodgings, Captain, but we were somewhat pressed for time. And as we were engaged to work here later this evening, in any <coughs> case, there's a hard consultant. Oh. And this here, Mrs. Trape's Emporium, makes up in privacy for what it may make in lunch. <laughs> we found you, we were right arm from arm. Yeah. After all, our needs are assembled. <laughs> Speak for yourself. There's no need to make a fuss when everything vital is at hand. Should you not be going on together, Captain? To linger here in any part of the city is surely an invitation for a hangman. <laughs> Mackie fears nothing! Woo! You can live until you die! Yeah. When's that day? Tuesday, are we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not for your heart. Oh, Molly Brazen. My Hibernian lark. I'll pluck you to your oh. shriek of delight. Oh, Captain. Still, Captain. Discretion is often the better part of our. A night's nice fortnight in Bath might take the heat off and, you know, produce a new arrangement for the powers that be. Nah, it's too late for that now, boys. Patient once crossed is an enemy more deadly than liver disease. And so I proud I hear is what he thought from the palace. They must ensure a scoundrel like myself may not pray at the guests at a royal wedding in the morning. The quality won't be dead tonight. And therefore so does he. Then surely it's better that you flee, Captain, before they blow you up like a three-ton gun. Then go where? Where London is the only place I might say I truly live. All other towns are nowhere to live. Yeah, Maggie Fears, Captain. Yeah. 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 <laughs> When's that day? Tuesday, we <laughs> The reason we are your excellent pilot. Sounds like bedlam in here. Why all the high drinks? We're mm. celebrating, Mrs. Trace. Mmm, hello, mm. yeah, rabbits, we are. Yeah. 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 As I slip from the snare. Yeah. Yeah. Bunch of convicts at place. Sorry, uh, you're not Mrs. Trace. We're good, decent, hard working horses. <laughs> We're just going about our trade as all. <laughs> admirable. Most admirable girls will help you. Nothing will stop you as <laughs> well. That's our philosophy, exactly. <laughs> and uh, what are these fine lads here? Bank clerks, I presume? Bank clerks, everyone! We certainly have a way with the readies, man. You're going to grab out another chance over there, you stecker. Well, then I hope you're moving them in the direction of our leaves. Mm -hmm. Lovely, lovely young ladies here, because um, they promised me. Friend by midnight. And you'll have it, Mrs. Trace. Once we're square with these gents here. 
Too late, too late for me. As you know, I've important guests arriving soon. I have to devote all my attention to them when they arrive. Harry! Pay up and let this tiresome dame retreat. How oh, tiresome? Hello, Lord Muck. <laughs> I have got a captain. Captain. Damn your eyes, Harry. Matt, Ben. Not far left, Captain. We've had no work these two nights, boys. Captain. <laughs> they will use our reward to set things straight. Captain, no work these last two nights and your reward. Why, well, I do think I know who you are, sir. You're that, um, that highwayman, that... Murdering, ruthless ruffian of the road. Here's your end, Mrs. Trapes. Such a savage as would slay a man for looking at him sideways and a woman for denying his heart's desires. Seven shillings, ma'am. All here is agreed. Such a man as would make respectable matron. Such as myself, quite weak with terror all around. <laughs> I tremble with anticipation. <laughs> Mrs. Trace. McKee, Captain McKee, admit who you are and no harm shall come to you. <laughs> McKee. Very well. I am the man who is destined for the drop. I am the man who is cheating death with every breath I take. I bid you good evening, ma'am. <laughs> A lovely lad in every way. Say as a compliment. Seven shillings, we said for seven hours rental. We have it here. You may keep it for our hand, a better ways that I think would bring pleasure to us all. You and I, Captain. <laughs> Shall resort to my chamber for an intimate conversation that I think will um, cover the night's expenses nicely. <laughs> Embroiled in his confederacy and dances. 
such as driven my beloved spouse to the gin bottle, when it's only the collapse of common sense and a great deal of operatic vexation may proceed. Long blast! He seems an alright pickle to me, but don't underestimate Peachum. He's a good man when the going gets tough. That score will be there with the kill. All right, Governor! Oh. You look lively! Hey, Gladys! And to serve as my good sir, as always, anything <laughs> illicit considered? Filch! Have you seen Filch? Filch, that the chief has gone to hide in on the sniff for Mac. He's probably on the piss again soon. He should have been back for court <laughs> hours ago. With the round 40 pounds for hanging on Tom Guy. Oh, what to do? Where to turn? Look, is there anything we can do, Mr. Peachum? We are, after all, the likeliest of likely lads. In that, at least, they do not lie. Why, yes, indeed. The devil never closes one door, but he opens another. Ned Gladys, my stalwart miscreants. Yes, sir. Stalwart, yes, miscreants, certainly. Okay. Stalwart, dear miscreants. Tiger Brown you must be destroyed. Tiger Brown? You heard me. What madness is this? Brown is untouchable. But not indestructible. An interesting distinction by any standards. Boys, Peach, have got his sleeve. <laughs> Tomorrow morning is the royal wedding. And the tops insist it all go off like a regular beano. And? That's where you come in. Robert, don't oh, get what you mean, Mr. You're not really no, picking no, up what you mean. The beggars revolt! We will stage it the minute the knobs finish their nuptials. Here comes the bride. <laughs> Closely followed by... Let the leper! Broken back, sea cholera soon. Starvation Jones and his charming wife, Sawbones Trudy. And a whole lot of host of grotesques and undesirables. They will flood the streets of our august capital in a flagrant display of disloyalty and quasi-insurrection brought about by the blatant failure of Tiger Brown to sweep these streets of the undesirables for this great day. They'll hang it by their collarbones for an hour of such anarchy. And that set me his ash for good. Mm, get about it. Get about it then. An army of vagrants, a throng of our cars. By nine o'clock. And our reward? I'll guarantee you a companion to that crutch. Why, who could say favour? Mr. Peter, is have always got an experience to get a head start with younger, more sprightly competitors. Oh, but look, you know who was the only man that was absent but a moment ago? Each was status of Rodin in his master's keen legal command. Yeah. I mean, you vermin seen the key. What's it to you? News of him is worth a sovereign to you. And <laughs> that's right. Oh, well, that's good to know. So we're in a piece, eh? Two Too kind, I'm sure. Go to well, or go to acne. Ah, oh, but look. There's locket. Two fools on one fool's errands. <laughs> Filt! <laughs> locket. What's to be done, locket? What's to be done? My thoughts exactly. <laughs> locket fizz, Miss Lucy will do herself. Oh, locket. Grievous injury if locket does not locate. The captain and Stanter. Miss Polly and I are precisely in the same fix. But uh, look at search the sea high and low, sir. And look at cannot find that beautiful highway, man. <laughs> well, he could be made of uh, fresh air for all the traces left of his passing, I suppose. But look at blame for his escape, sir. If look at does not find him, look at's got more than Miss Brown to fear. The jig is up for all if he's not brought to justice. Look, it's really searched so hard, sir. Look, it even went to the whorehouse three times. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it stayed alive, sir. Well, could he have fled the city itself then? Never. He was tired of London, tired of life. All right, come on, lock it. Okay. Eyes peeled. News rises in on every breeze. If the streets have eyes and ears, then we are it. Or should we say that? Mrs. Mitchell, my wife, and I have good spelling pets. And Mrs. Strokes, all over the convincing canter. She's still eating the pie. Neck and neck, I'd say for now. Oh, but look, she can hear now to open country. I'm going to move a bit, sorry. The shop of her shit is a thing. Now hear this, Saul. McKeith, the dark captain, he's got a swing tonight. Five sovereigns for the man who snaps a snare. Oh, but is this coming out the two ends of a pantal horse? A light. Oh, Mrs. Peacher, what good fortune! Feared I'd have to go to your very house to alert you. Alert me, Mrs. Drapes? Well, as you can see, 
Lucy, I'm already a model of alertitude. <laughs> okay, Captain McKeith, Mrs. Peach, and I believe he plays no passing part in your affairs. The man is the very devil, Mrs. Trapes. My nemesis and Mr. Peachum's also, unless we act with spirit to safeguard our good name and our good fortune. Drinking and whoring whenever he's not scourging travellers with his gang. And marrying my daughter without so much as a by your leave. He will leave her in the gutter for he casts women aside like leaky boots. And as for the rest of us, we can rot in hell. But we will stop him in his tracks, Mrs. Peachum. The matrons in London shall be his undoing. If only it were possible. Mrs. Drake's gathering pace now, but heavy going certainly seems to suit her. Step out the road, Mrs. Peachum, and I'll reveal two fact most pertinent to your well being and to my pride. Wars of ease, wind is fine. Ensconced, inebriated, and rutting like a tomcat. She begins to close in on her quiet. The whole damn crew. Sodom and Gomorrah in your very living room on the very night that I was expecting some well healed new customers. Let's send for Tiger Brown. Oh no, we must not do that, Mrs. Drapes. But he was set him straight, that's what he's done. Paid to do. The man has turned his coat, Mrs. Drapes. He's in league with that painted devil. We must find McKeith and finish him without Brown's help, otherwise we are bound to fail. Aha! So the captain is at your boardy house, Mrs. Drapes. Oh, acting police commissioner Brown. Acting Tiger Brown to you. And as for you. Oh look! There he is! Lying out loud. Can I have the reward now, Tiger? Reward? When he runs free, when you've been complicit in supplying false information to a police officer, you'll be lucky to escape hanging. Which, that aforementioned Jade, shall not arrest that Tiger Fussy! The whole herd now works together as they face back in from the open country and take a wire berth heading towards the water dump. Each man head by a high neck with steam, but Mrs. Jade is going well at her ease. And Tiger Brown is well up there too among the leaders. And, strike a light, on the outside, I do believe that Lucy Brown and Polly Peacham have recovered from previous setbacks and are now challenging the leading group in their lifelong pursuit of their favourite fox, while simultaneously engaged in a well moderated cab fight disguised as civilised reconciliation. I do believe that either or both of these fine 20 year old fillies can carry the day. Do you know to me? I hope you were pardon my passion when I was so happy to see you lost. I was so overwhelmed with the spleen that I was perfectly at home myself. And really, when one has the spleen, everything should be excused by a friend. <laughs> Your argument is mine, dear lady. We were both quite out of our humour. But it appears now that we are both <laughs> quite back in. It is exactly so. I can scarce recall the wild accusations I made. Nor can I. And therefore, let us dismiss them as one would a crazed dream. By all means, sweet lady, let them run with the nightmare. I wish all our quarrels may have so comfortable a reconciliation. Amen to that. And to celebrate. In the way of friendship, will you give me leave to propose a glass of cordial to you? You are kind. Uh, but strong waters are apt to give me the edge. I'm afraid, madam, you will have to excuse me. Not the greatest lady in the land could have better in a closet for her own private drinking. You seem mighty low in spirits, my dear. I'm sorry, madam, but my health will not allow me to accept your offer. The captain treated me with such contempt and cruelty that I've not even had time to recover myself. But since his escape, no doubt all matters are made up again. <coughs> oh, Polly, Polly, tis I am the unhappy wife and he loves you now as if you were his only mistress. It is a kind fault. But a man such as the captain is always afraid of a woman who loves him too well. So I too must expect to be neglected and avoided. In our cases, my dear Polly, are exactly alike. Both of us indeed have been too fond. <coughs> our cats of both sexes are self-lovers. And that is a love no other whatever can dispossess. I fear, my dear Lucy, that our husband is one of those. Perhaps. But 
Away with these melancholy reflections. It seems that both of us indeed are a cup too low. Let me prevail upon you to accept my offer. You imagine the truth. I cannot accept your need. You are as squeamishly affected about taking a cup of strong waters as a lady with full company. I vow, Polly, I shall take it monstrously ill if you refuse me. Brandy and men, though women love them ever so well, are always taken by us with some reluctance. Unless it is in private. Then drink you first. Ah, oh, I have made it specially for you. I do not doubt it. It would greatly offend my code of manners to drink first in the company of a guest. That is most courteous of you. But perhaps it is better to commit a small impropriety than murder. Rancid bitch, scheming slut! Tell me all I say! Let's run the field to work! Your father, still on Maggie's tail! That makes three of us! Arise, O rabbit of London! And take back what is mine! I mean yours! More! To drink! To drink! A thieving fox may duck and dive, but I fear it is all up for Maggie, for his lovers are more lethal than his foes. Few indeed who do not want him dead. What a pageant! I wonder what that trio of tops approaching Mrs. Strokes is now for more conventional reasons. We'll think when that human hurricane hits that house of sin in a minute. Actually, it might be interesting to find out. Let's pop along. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> what? <laughs> Certainly not. Out of the question. Delightful as it would be to carry you, I fear it might attract undesirable attention at a sensitive moment. <laughs> yes, of course, there'll be plenty of underage girls there, only too happy to asphyxiate you. <laughs> you hardly think that we'd have strayed so far from our normal haunts if there weren't all the menu? No, no. As you can see, plenty of <laughs> freaks of nature and mathematic displays, simultaneous fellatio oh. and buggery, <laughs> murder the act if so desired. As you can see, it is a comprehensive service, something for every office. Sounds highly recommended. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, sex in nappies comes as standard. <laughs> but I don't see any mention of carnal relations with domestic or even farm animals. Oh, it's just not practical in a built-up area. Besides, the animals make a terrible wreckage. Oh, 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 oh. All right, all right, I'll see you. Nigel can send down his best mare for later. Later. Oh, but look how jolly we are here to revive. Oh. Hello. What's all this then? Just a gay bachelor on his last night of freedom. <laughs> We appear to be missing Audrey. <laughs> well, that's quite all right. It is, after all, a highly educational establishment. Step right in, gents. We'll give you a royal welcome. Yeah, like the 
take a gander at the special thunderbolt. <laughs> <laughs> What's his boss? Our oh, Gus friend here has the most voracious appetite for novelty. Oh, greedy old son, eh? Yeah, he's certain rarefied. Well, you can forget about the water walks because we're just not equipped with that good thing around here. Oh, never mind. He makes a terrible mess in any case. Why, oh, I'm on board, Oh, that's quite a rush. <laughs> but you might like to try some of our landing tasting plans. <laughs> Oh, that's what you want! Arrest that man! Arrest him, you're so delaying! Oh, the pressure! Left door to the jukebox! Oh, what did he 
Hamilton's most dangerous highway man is in this very building, and I've come here at a moment's notice to arrest him to make the streets safe again for decent people like yourselves. Who's he calling? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a greater danger than you, dwellers, colourful but uh, destitute. Is he calling me destitute? Yeah. Police brutality! What do we want? Police brutality! Well, you certainly appear destitute unless you're begging good to false pretenses. No, no, not at all. I'm destitute. Always have been. Always will be destitute. I'm proud I am. Me, me. I'm the most destitute and deserving of the law. So now the building. Let no man pass in or out, and I can guarantee you that ten minutes from now, not one of you will be destitute. Rewards and I for the capture of a criminal like this one. Stooley! Police spy stooge! Yeah. He's trying to finger you boys, one and all! Your reward will be a prison set, I promise you! Get him! <laughs> I'll deal with all of you later. And as for you, Petrol Parasite Mutating Virus! Hello, Sherlock! What's all this then? <laughs> Out of my way, she devil. I'm about to make the most famous arrest of my era. High times, high jinks. The tide will bring them back to earth with a bomb. Or should I say bye? Everybody on their knees! Oh, God's sake, do I have to think of anything of doggy style? Doggy style, be damned. <laughs> I've got you at last, you fiend. Oh, hello, Tiger. <laughs> Can you come back with me, Tiger? We're having a sad party. Oh. Getting married again, are we, Captain? I mean, why not? After all, it's been a week since your last tried the knot. Honestly, can't you see that? Matrimony is a generally wholesome habit, Mackie. It makes a man out of a man, if you know what I mean. There you go, Stein. Set to learn his own two feet, sorry, lass. But in your case, given your naturally criminal tendencies... <laughs> my case be is nothing! Become addicted to matrimony <laughs> and get hitched up every five minutes. <laughs> With catastrophic consequences for everyone operating in your economic milieu. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tiger. <laughs> now the question is, who's the lucky girl? I am. Oi? We're playing Buckingham Bronco, the marriage degradation game. And I'm the bride. Disgusting. I've never heard of anything you more. You see, tomorrow night I'm laying the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Forward looking at my plans, Your Majesty. I must beg your forgiveness. Here, let me lick your feet so the falling dog. Oh, my feet, don't you? I hate my feet being touched. <laughs> I'll let them perhaps start. Of our time. Oh, how exciting. Oh, we're a sinful war. Just about everything you can name, actually. Everything. Well, <laughs> one can't be certain given your Majesty's depth of life experience. Oh, you get over, Tiger. You're only throwing shapes given for the convenience of the palace. Yeah. What about you the ass? Edge your dress. Beware, Your Majesty. He's a dangerous criminal in close proximity to your royal person. I had lunch with the Prime Minister and my mother this morning. <laughs> After that, I fear nothing. <laughs> in any case, this magnificent animal here. That's me, Tiger! <laughs> he can't leave this educational establishment until he's taught me all the delights of the London Cat. <laughs> the Lord of Cato, that will kill you, Your what Majesty. Thanks. Now you can get back in the closet, or disappear, or generally, well, fuck off. <laughs> 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 Ha ha ha!
Good girls here to asphyxiate me. What do you want? I own the place. Mm. And I want guests to get ready for. Mm. We've arrived. Oh, oh welcome, welcome, yeah. welcome. I hope you enjoy your evening. We are having a ripping time. <laughs> <laughs>
on London's underworld. Which won't cost you a penny. Sign it into law and we will save you. Thus, saving you a very embarrassing debt. Posthumous conviction for a quartet of heinous murder. That's why in our whorehouse on the very eve of your mariage. What a The underage goat. The asphyxiation. No more underage girls, I'm afraid. But
population of London Town. <laughs> Man, <laughs> just be like her time for you in luck. It just like her time, they rattle your chains if you agree. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 